Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. Dow Jones clinched a 10th consecutive days of gains, something that wasn't seen since August 2017. This is good news as the market rally broadens to other stocks. Meanwhile, there was a steep drop in some of the mega cap tech stocks, especially Tesla and Netflix. So here's the question, will the sell-off in the tech industry continue this week? Well, the tech sector will definitely remain in focus this week with Alphabet, Meta and Microsoft reporting their earnings. But whether the sell-off will continue, I think it hinges on how good their earnings are. On a separate note, I have quite a fair bit of stuff to share for my option trades in this video, so if this interests you, do watch on to find out more. Both S&P 500 and Dow Jones had a positive week, but Nasdaq declined mainly due to the sell-off in Tesla, Netflix and a few mega-cap stocks. Despite these tech and growth stocks taking a hit, the stock market still looks healthy as other industries such as the banking, travel and even pharmaceutical are showing strength and resilience. Anyway, the market was especially volatile last Thursday and Friday and I suspect it could be because fund managers are recalibrating their portfolios to account for the special Nasdaq 100 rebalance which will take place on Monday 24th July. Meanwhile, companies' earnings have been mixed so far. According to fact sheet data, 75% of S&P 500 companies that have reported their earnings have exceeded analysts' expectation. However, this figure is lower than a 3-year average of 80%, according to the earnings scout. The tech sector will definitely remain in focus this week as we have Alphabet, Microsoft and Snap reporting on Tuesday 25th July and Meta on Wednesday 26th July. Microsoft, Google and Meta earnings will likely shake things up, especially for the tech industry. The reason is simple, these three tech giants boast nearly $5 trillion in market cap combined. Therefore, their earnings, guidance, forecast and spending plan will be important for cloud computing, artificial intelligence, digital advertising and more. Separately, FOMC meeting is also taking place this week on 25th and 26th July. And on the second day, there will be an announcement by Jerome Powell on whether will there be a rate hike this month. After a pause in rate hike last month, the market is widely expecting the Fed to raise 25 basis points this month. But the real question is, what is the rate hike outlook for the rest of the year? Are we going to have another one by the end of the year? Actually, tame inflation reports and encouraging data have showed that the Fed's rate hike campaign is working. So should the Fed hike the rate for another time, which may then increase the risk of a potential recession? Finally, before Monday's market open, a Nasdaq 100 special rebalance will take place, which aim to reduce the weightage of the magnificent 7 tech stocks. Personally, I think this special rebalance should not have huge impact on the tech giants this week, as the news has been out for about 2 weeks, and we had already seen some pullbacks. Moving over to the technical analysis segment, as usual, let's begin things off with SPY. I like how SPY is respecting this uptrend channel green dotted line. It basically attempted to break out of it, but failed to do so. That said, it is still floating around the line. So this week, we, I think we can expect SPY to retest this line again. The levels we are looking at are around 452-453, which I have shared last week. Good earnings and positive forecasts from the various tech giants could push SPY above this resistance line. As usual, look out for a few green candles and decent volume for confirmation. If SPY really breaks above 452-453 and hold above it for 2 days or more, that's very bullish. And that will very likely bring us to the next resistance level at around 460, very close to the all-time high of 468. But if we have some poor earnings from the tech giants and some other big non-tech stocks, I think we can expect SPY to drop to the gap area, which is between 442 to 444. This area should hold in my opinion, because not only it's the gap area, it is also where the recent high was. Below this, we have another support at 437, where the first Fibonacci retracement level is. Even further down, we have the 50 moving average at 431, which will also act as a support. In fact, it is a support that has not been tested since we had that gap up in late March this year. Personally, I think if we do not fall below this level this or next week after a wave of earnings from various top US companies, both tech and non-tech, 
then I think SPY is positioning itself quite well for continuation of the bull run till the end of the year. Don't forget we have FOMC meeting this week. If all this can't bring SPY down, what can? But of course, just want to caveat, this is not a financial advice and things can change along the way. So do stay subscribed to my channel as I continue to provide updates on a weekly basis. Moving over to Apple's chart, not much movement on Apple's end. It basically has been moving like what I have shared over the last two videos, consolidation. It is in this consolidation phase that it moved between the two Fibonacci levels, between 187 and 195. It did try to break above 195 last week, but got rejected. So again for this week, don't be surprised if Apple tests this level again. Similar to what I have shared previously, if only Apple can clinch this 195 decisively, then the level 200 will very much come into picture. On the downside, as a recap, watch out for that 20 moving average, which has been a decent dynamic support level for the last 4 months. It's like a magical line. Whenever Apple touch it, we tend to have a short term bounce up. So, if you are a short term trader, you might want to play this potential bounce with stop loss of course. The stop loss can be 2 candles below the 20 moving average. Then you have to take the loss and move on. Reason being, so far, Apple has been able to bounce up with just 1 candle or maximum 2 candles below this 20 moving average. But a quick disclaimer, this is not a financial advice. Below this dynamic support, the next support is at 187. If we touch this level, it will not get me excited yet. I will be more excited if Apple starts hitting low 180s, where the 50 moving average is at around 183. Lastly, just to highlight, there is a bearish divergence on the RSI, and this divergence did play out with two red candles towards the end of last week. With this, just be mentally prepared that this week, Apple may start really testing that 20 moving average that we spoke about earlier on, at around 190 or sub 190. More important thing to watch is how Apple react after testing this 20 moving average. Let's now move over to Tesla. Tesla's chart has a huge bearish divergence on the RSI, which it did play out with the two big fat red candles post earnings. So, will this divergence continue? Let's look out for some of the key levels. As you can see from the chart, Tesla has fallen back below the long-term downtrend line and also sliced through the 23.6 Fibonacci retracement level at 264. That's bearish. But of course, we all can see, given that close to 10% drop last Thursday. Interestingly, someone actually asked me on Mumu where is the next support after 264, which I shared is around 253 to 255, and that could be the next target. And guess what? Tesla hit 255.8 on Friday and bounced up. Therefore, this week, watch this 253 to 255 support zone again. Buyers have to step in. If they don't, then Tesla could be in trouble. The next support level is actually at 243 with the gap sitting dangerously below it. The gap is between 235 to 240, which of course will act as a magnet to pull Tesla down if Tesla starts to hit the 243 support level. To also note, the gap is also where the 50 moving average sits at 235. This area must hold. If they don't, then we are talking about 220s range all over again. From the recent high at about 300 to 220, that's a 26% drop. Okay, before I talk about the potential upside, again I would like to appeal for your support to help me hit 1k subscribers. A look at the stats shows that more than 60% of the viewers who watch my video did not subscribe to my channel. If you think my content is useful, I would really appreciate if you could just hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me as I aim to hit 1k subscribers by December this year. At this moment, mathematically, it is not possible unless more people start hitting the subscribe buttons. And if you would like to support the channel in other form, you may consider signing up for a Weeboo account using my referral link or buying me a coffee using the coffee link below. Okay, in terms of upside for Tesla, the long-term trend line will continue to act as a resistance. So Tesla needs to break above this line again to regain its bullish momentum. If it can do that, then the probability of Tesla filling that big gap between 280 to 289 is high. 
And one thing will usually lead to another. So if Tesla can fill that gap, then I think momentum will almost certainly push Tesla towards 300 level again. Though right now the momentum is weak and bearish, but just for the record, above 300, the next resistance is at around 315. Personally, I think it's sooner or later for Tesla to reclaim this 300 level. It's just a matter of time. Moving over to Google, Google is having a very interesting setup for this week. It's almost like a make or break week for Google with their earnings coming up on Tuesday. From the chart, you can see that Google broke out of this purple downtrend channel and as per what I have shared previously, don't be surprised if Google retraced to backtest the purple trend line. And it did. I hope this warrants a like button from you. Anyway, I like it just how coincidence that Google sits right above this trend line as we enter its earnings day. So I would say the earnings will determine if Google bounces off this line or falls back to the downtrend channel. If it bounces up, great. This means this latest pullback is healthy and Google is likely ready for more upside. By bouncing off this line, we are almost certainly heading towards 125 again, where the major resistance level is. It's a level that Google had difficulty staying above. I mean, as you can see, we went above 125 on a few occasions recently but could not sustain. Then we fell back down. So positive earnings could potentially bring Google above 125 and finally stay above it. That's when 130s will come into picture. But, but, yeah, here's the but. If Google doesn't have good earnings or if Microsoft who reports its earnings on the very same day outshines Google, then Google could just easily fall back into the downtrend channel. Falling back into that channel simply means more downside potential. We may then easily hit the 50% Fibonacci retracement level and fill that gap between 113 and 114. The bottom end of the channel is at around 111, which coincides with the 61.8 Fibonacci level. And do note that this area is the so-called last line of defense. If it breaks, then it's very bearish for Google. Alright, this week I have a fair bit of option trades to share with you guys. First of all, I opened two new trades. The first trade was this cash secured put on Google, which was sold on 18 July with a strike price of 113, expiring on 25th August. Reason why I saw it is because Google broke out of this purple downtrend line, so that was bullish. But as shared earlier, it is also expected that Google could retrace back to retest the purple trend line, which it did. But I think I had entered this trade too early on 18 July, as I could have waited for two more days when it officially touched that purple trend line. However, this is of course a hindsight comment. I opened the trade early because in this bull market, almost every dip has been bought up by dip buyers so far. Anyway, the worst case scenario that will happen now is what I've shared in the TA segment, Google goes back into the downtrend channel and turns bearish. But that being said, there are two important support levels below. One is that 50% Fibonacci retracement level at 114, while the other one is the gap between 113 to 114. The gap will likely act as a support as typically in the bull market, stock tends to bounce up at the gap area. We have seen that in Tesla a few weeks ago. So now you know the reason why I chose 113 as the strike price. But of course, further weak momentum could bring Google to the bottom of the channel at around 1110 to 111. However, this option has more than one month to expiration. Chances are Google may bounce up by then, given the bull market we are in. Next up, I saw a cash secured put on Tesla with a strike price of 220 expiring on 25th August. But before I dive into the details, I would say this trade is a little risky because short term wise, Tesla is facing a sell off. And more importantly, the implied volatility is quite low at 50 plus percent. For context, a lot of times when I traded Tesla in the past, the IV was like 60 to 70 percent last year the IV was 80-90% to 90 if I don't recall wrongly, which made the premiums very juicy. So with a low IV, it means I have to choose a strike price that is nearer to the current price to have a decent premium. And it is a risk that I have to undertake because if Tesla falls below 220 on my expiration date, I have to buy 100 shares of it at $220 per share. Anyway, I still decided to open this trade because I think the market is overreacting to Tesla's earnings. 
In my view, the earnings look decent and their fundamentals remain strong. The sell-off was likely triggered by a lower profit margins and potential price cuts in the near term. Therefore, I believe Tesla stock will bounce back up after this group of investors complete their sell-off. Okay, so why 220 as a strike price? For this, I actually drew two Fibonacci retracement levels. It may be a little hard to see on screen. But anyway, looking at the yellow Fibonacci retracement level, I wanted to choose the 61.8 level as that's the safest option in my opinion. But the premium was really low, hence I looked at the 50% level instead, which is around 225. But to give myself a little more buffer, I dropped the strike price to 220. Next, check out this purple Fibonacci retracement level. For Tesla to complete its full retracement, it needs to go back to 240's range. And to err on the safe side, I look below this level. And the next two levels are 226 and 218. Again, I could have taken 225 since 226 coincides with the earlier yellow Fibonacci level. I decided to still have that buffer and went with 220, just above 218 level. Next up, if you recall, in my last video, I sold this Tesla covered call. I will link the video at the top, do check it out. So at that point, this trade was looking a little risky as Tesla was rallying close to 300. And people were yelling for 315, 350, etc. My trade was red, as shared in my last video as well. But check out the trade this week, it's positive 82%. And if you want to know the rationale behind this trade, again, please check out my previous video. Lastly, I had one Tesla cash secured put expired last Friday. This position was open on 15 June, where Tesla was at 240s to 250s range. And at that point, I had the luxury to choose a decent low strike price of 195 with a not too bad premium. Since then, Tesla has been rallying. Even when it dropped by 10% recently, it was still quite far off from my strike price. And time decay has also set in. As a result, the contract expired worthless and I managed to secure the full premium. Sorry I'm a little lazy to pull out that video that was done about a month ago to link it at the top. So in order not to miss any of my content, please please subscribe to my channel alright? As usual, some end thoughts to wrap up the video. Personally, I think the earnings haven't been that bad so far. And if this trend continues, I think the market could push higher by the end of the year. But of course, there will be sideway consolidation or even significant pullbacks before that. Just like the case of Tesla and Netflix, the sell-off could look massive and scary to some. I mean, Tesla fell by close to 10% in one day, and that could have spooked a lot of investors. However, at this point, I am of the view that such sell-offs are not a major concern yet. There could be a few reasons for the sell-offs. Firstly, a lot of expectation has been priced into the various mega cap stocks. So it's like you need to score 100 points for the stock to not face a sell-off. 80 points, 90 points seem to be not good enough. But if you take a step back, is 90 points a good performance? To me, it definitely is. Secondly, it could also be a rotation of funds. As mentioned earlier, other industries are now playing the catch-up game as they rallied. To have a healthy bull market, we need the market breadth to improve. In other words, more industries and stocks need to join this rally, which I think we are slowly seeing that now. Lastly, the recent sell-off in a few of the mega cap tech stocks could also be fund managers reacting and adjusting their portfolios in view of the Nasdaq 100 special rebalance. Come this week and next week, we have the top few US tech companies reporting their earnings. So if we get similar fierce sell-offs like what we have seen in Tesla and Netflix, don't be too surprised. It's completely healthy to me. Unless of course certain key support levels break, which then bring us back to my technical analysis segment. In fact, for those who have missed 2023's rally, such sell-offs should get you excited, isn't it? So do work out a plan on the various entry prices and dip your toes in when the stocks you want drop to your desired price targets. And just to share, I doubled in Tesla stock last week after its close to 10% drop. Finally, with so many things going on this week, earnings, FOMC, etc. do expect high volatility in the market. So if you are a trader, do trade with caution. Big movements in individual stocks can potentially inflict major losses in your portfolio. 
So, does the recent sell-off concern you? Let me know in the comment section below. With that, I have come to the end of my video. Please help to tap the like and subscribe buttons if you found my content useful. It will help to grow this channel. Thank you.